Good afternoon, friends, and welcome from my side. Today we have an interesting topic, and that topic is uh, improving OE and uh, how that can be used to achieve manufacturing excellence. So this is the topic that we have. So when you talk about uh, excellence in manufacturing, we generally talk about two targets that we have, the target of quality and cost. As far as quality is concerned, the target is to control the process by which we only produce good parts and thereby ensuring that not only the customer does not get rejects or non-conforming parts, but we also do not increase our cost in terms of the variation which produces rejects or rework. So that's how we control the quality costs. At the same time, we must also remember that this target is a continuously moving target. Day by day, the requirements of our customer in terms of quality are increasing. So it's a moving target and we have to continuously update our quality systems to ensure that we are able to meet the customer's requirement. On the other hand, we have the target of cost because there is an intense competition. We are, we are globalized and cost is related to productivity. Ultimately, if you have a continuously increasing productivity, you will be able to reduce the cost. Of course, cost reduction besides productivity has many other facets. But today, as far as manufacturing is concerned, productivity is the key driver of reducing manufacturing cost. So remembering these two aspects, that quality and productivity go hand in hand, we have to move forward in both these areas continuously to keep achieving the targets that are also continuously moving. Production, this is production. All of us know, all of us count what has been produced maybe in a day or a, or a week or a month. And of course, we also have something called productivity where people have different ways of, of measuring productivity. For example, you will have productivity in terms of time, so in, in what time, how much was produced, or you can have productivity in terms of the capital invested, or you can have labor productivity. So there are various ways of looking at productivity. Secondly, it is also true that different people in the organization might have different views on productivity. So I would like to ask you one question first of all, and for that I will launch the first poll that we talk about productivity, how many of you are already in the process of measuring overall equipment effectiveness or OE? So when we say productivity measurement, we basically relate an output to an input. So productivity is a ratio of an output to an input. And in terms of manufacturing, uh, under the uh, umbrella of total productive maintenance, we have a metric called overall equipment effectiveness or OEE in short. So this is a very interesting metric and a very good metric for measuring productivity. It's a language which can be used in all organizations and it can be universally understood. So we are going now going to talk about OEE as a productivity metric for the purpose of this presentation. Now, I want to ask you another question, that if the cycle time of a part is six minutes, in a shift of seven hours, how many parts do you get? So 13 of you say that you will get 70 parts. Yes, that's what the arithmetic says. But if you are a practicing production person, your answer of 50 to 70 is more likely than 70. Now, why do you think 50 to 70 is a more likely answer than 70. For this, I would request you to write down because we find that the output in numbers is far lower than what we expect. So if you have a pen and paper in front of you, 
write down at least 10 reasons why you do not get the production as you expect. Just write it down. I'll give you a few minutes to do this. So participants, please try to write down whatever reasons you think that you don't get the production that you expect. We are going to come back to this question and your answers closer to the end of the presentation when we will try to bifurcate these reasons into various areas, or various, uh, uh, you know, stratify the data, stratify your answers. So just write down. Let me give you another couple of minutes more. Quickly jot down. Doesn't matter. You don't have to have an elaborate thing. Just a couple of words would be enough for each uh, reason. I my machine, what happens? Method, what happens? Material, what happens? Don't give generic answers. Your answers should be very specific. The whole purpose of OEE is to try to drive specifics rather than have very generic answers because generic things don't have solutions. Okay, hope you have written, whoever is written, and you can keep adding to it as we go through the presentations. But keep them aside for the moment and we'll continue. So OE or overall equipment effectiveness. Now we move on to the actual formula for OE. OE is multiplication of three factors. These three factors are known as AE, PE, and QE. Uh, AE stands for availability efficiency. And what this means is to what extent is the asset, could it be machine, equipment, available for production? For example, if it's a metal cutting thing, metal cutting uh, machine, then how much time does the machine actually is available to cut chips? Or if it's a molding machine, how much time the machine is actually able to do its operation of molding, etc. So Availability is to the extent that the asset is available for production. P is uh, performance efficiency. And by, by that, what we mean is to what extent is the asset performance compared to the rated performance? Now, this uh, word rated is very important in this, and we will uh, you know, have an explanation for this in the coming slides. But we are talking about its optimum performance or optimized performance. Something of that nature is what is the meaning of rated performance. So it's available first, then it performs to its optimum level. And finally, we have QE, which is quality efficiency, which is to what extent is the quality produced as compared to the rated quality. Again, the word rated is important. We'll again discuss what this means as we go along. So to summarize this, OE is a multiplication of three factors, availability, performance, and quality. And these three factors together result in the overall equipment effectiveness or effectively using your equipment. So now let's talk about what is the rated cycle time of a part. So rated cycle time of a part is arrived during component trial. This is a statement that I'm making. So when you are actually trying out a component, be it on a molding machine or injection molding machine or, or, or any other foundry equipment, how much time is the cycle time of making that part? On a CNC machine, of course, it would mean the cycle time as, as run by a program. So moving forward, let us now look at availability, performance, and quality a little bit more in detail. So. A or availability efficiency is the available time divided by the loading time. Now, in that example that we saw just now, the loading time was 20 hours, right? That is the hours available to the management for using the resource. And the available time would be the loading time minus the downtime that is incurred. So available time is the loading time minus downtime. So A is loading time minus downtime upon loading time. So this is the, the formula for calculating AE. So all downtimes 
which are greater than 10 minutes are treated as part of availability. So anytime the machine is not available for production for more than 10 minutes is accounted for in availability as a downtime. We can break this up further saying that, okay, we will now look at what is the actual cycle time and what is the rated cycle time. We can compare it. So that factor is rated cycle time divided by actual cycle time and that is known as the speed loss. That means to what extent are we losing out because our actual cycle time is more than the rate cycle time. The reasons could be many. It could be due to the wear and tear of the equipment. It could be due to material variation. It could be due to the operator. It could be many reasons why our actual cycle time is more than the rated cycle time. And the other factor is output into actual cycle time divided by available time. And this is considered as idling or minor losses. This is where all those downtimes, which are less than 10 minutes, would be captured under the minor losses. So under performance efficiency, you are capturing all those downtimes which are less than 10 minutes. Very often your downtimes are 30 seconds, one minute, half a minute, two minutes, very short downtimes, which you are not able to actually capture very effectively on a when you do it on paper and pencil, but when you use software, then these kind of things get captured. And then you have, of course, the derating of the process which takes place, wherein the actual cycle time is more than the rated cycle time. 